What's up, everybody? My name is Walter Hinchman. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Wolverine. Today, we're going to be talking about creatine HCl or hydrochloride versus creatine monohydrate. So with so many different forms of creatine, it's very important to find the right type of creatine to deliver the most effective results for you. Insert creatine HCl versus monohydrate, right? Creatine hydrochloride, much like prealkaline, is an advanced form of creatine, has become a prominent option when it comes to creatine supplements. However, studies have shown that most advanced forms of creatine don't produce any better results than creatine monohydrate. We're going to talk about more about the differences in the science about creatine HCl versus creatine monohydrate. So first off, how does creatine work? What does creatine do? Um, when creatine is digested, it is stored as creatine phosphate. Creatine basically can improve performance, promoting power and strength by replenishing adenotriphosphate, adenosine triphosphate, which is ATP during high intensity exercise. It also can help you with increasing lean body mass, helps with cognitive function and building more overall total body strength. Ultimately, all advanced forms of creatine will start with the base ingredient of creatine monohydrate. So we're all starting with creatine monohydrate. At the molecular level, however, creatine is naturally is a naturally occurring compound within the human body. Creatine is a combination of three amino acids, it's glycine, arginine, and methionine. 95% of creatine is actually stored in the skeletal muscle, and the remaining 5% is distributed in the brain, liver, kidneys, and testes. So creatine is produced endogenously and predominantly occurs in the liver uh, and kidneys and to a lesser extent in the pancreas. So creatine is, is definitely utilized during high intensity physical activity for energy output, right? Um, like I said, it generates adenosine triphosphate, ATP, to uh, keep a constant supply of energy during your exercise so that it can keep up with the production of your working muscles. So creatine HCl is actually created by adding a hydrochloride group to the base ingredient creatine monohydrate. Hydrochloric acid is a principal constituent of stomach acid. So manufacturers suggest that the addition of hydrochloride is going to improve creatine stability and solubility, which overall their uh, idea of increasing absorption. So Creatine monohydrate, however, is compared to other forms of types of creatine. It has poor solubility and is one of the primary advantages and differentiators of advanced types of creatine, such as HCl and creatine. However, do these studies back up the claims about creatine HCl? Is creatine HCl better than monohydrate? That's the real question. Creatine HCl, like I said, was created as another option to promote greater bioavailability, which means the absorption rate, right? So reducing relatively common side effects such as upset stomach due to the loading protocols with creatine monohydrate. Preliminary studies uh, have shown good results thus far. Uh, an animal study found that creatine HCl was 38 more times more soluble than creatine monohydrate. However, even with that one determination, there are no human clinical trials assessing further solubility of creatine HCl in humans. So um, you're lacking evidence there. So more research is really needed to verify actual clinical results in the real world. With that said, while HCl is claimed to have better bioavailability due to the hydrochloride, uh, your stomach, like I said, contains hydrochloric acid. Creatine HCl has been found to be more soluble in water than creatine monohydrate. However, once exposed to the hydrochloric acid in your stomach, uh, it's shown to the creatine solubility um, has not really increased. So making creatine monohydrate stable in stomach acid as well. So solubility differences will be negligible once creatine HCl is ingested or supplemented once it hits the stomach. Additionally, HCl claims that it solves for stomach issues such as bloating and cramping. When you're loading creatine at 20 grams more per day, this can decrease the amount that you're actually absorbing, which can cause gastrointestinal discomfort. So if you're taking the three to five gram dose, uh, over the course of a month, as opposed to loading 20 grams a day, you're not going to experience those gastrointestinal issues. So creatine is all about getting into your bloodstream. So if you don't want to, or building up that saturation. So if you don't want to do that, it's totally fine. Overall, no studies of peer reviewed research has shown that creatine HCL will produce better results or outcomes in traditional creatine monohydrate. So when it comes to performance, gain of muscle mass, strength, and power output, there's little to no difference between creatine hydrochloride and creatine monohydrate. Those that may, so some of you may experience bloating or gastrointestinal issues, uh, you should simply just take three to five grams of creatine monohydrate per day and you will avoid or bypass those stomach or, or issues that you're having gastrointestinally. So um, guys, if you have any questions, if you need any more information on health, nutrition, supplements, anything in terms of wellness or fitness, visit swolverine.com, visit the blog, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And until next time, guys.